from home being. Yeah, thanks. And good afternoon, uh, everyone. And uh, my name is Hong Bin. I'm from uh, Institute of Software, Chinese Academy of Science. Uh, and I'm very, really glad to be here to introduce our work. Uh, our name is uh, Body Compiler. And we hope to build an MLR based compilation framework for deep learning co design. And maybe you are, want to know why we are using the body as our name. And I uh, it is because we, we just want to be a body system for the domain-specific compilers. And you know the deep learning is really interesting and really hot domain currently. So this is the overview of our whole framework. Actually, we currently have three um, main modules, like uh, the compiler framework and the online service and the benchmark framework. So today, I will focus more on the compiler framework. And uh, currently, we have split the, the compiler framework into front end, mid end, and back end. Um, let's see the front end. Front end, uh, we have three uh, mainly parts. Uh, that first, firstly, we, we, we actually uh, use the domain-specific language to uh, program through our uh, front end, uh, we actually wrap the op uh, wrap the MLR operations into a domain specific language. And another one is the DSL framework. We use the Antler uh, use uh, uh, to build our DSL front end for MLR. It can save uh, a lot of effort uh, for build your own custom uh, uh, domain specific language. And the third third one is the uh, domain uh, is the deep learning framework integration that we can reuse a lot of awesome works from the uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and OpenXLA, something like this. We, we, we get this uh, module IR, deep learning module IR, from this awesome framework. Uh, that's we, how we designed the front end. And uh, in our mid end, uh, we actually use. Uh, Design the domain specific MLR dialects uh, for the different um, multimodal representations like uh, audio processing and image processing, something like that. Uh, and when we uh, have this definition, we, we actually use uh, MLR to conduct the optimization and lowering. Uh, and uh, we also want to uh, design some auto config mechanism for multiple backends because we, we, we really want to. Uh, the right ones and the run on different uh, architectures. So uh, we, we actually use the sum mechanism. And for the backend, uh, we will design the hardware specific MLR dialect for the specific, uh, maybe the custom accelerators, something like this. And we will use the LVM backend to conduct the, uh, the assembly code generation. Uh, and we also uh, use the hardware specific toolchains and emulators to run and evaluate. And these uh, are uh, our compiler module overview. And so uh, maybe you, you will ask where will the co design ha happen? Um, in our opinion, like uh, MLR and RISC 5 are a perfect match for the co design because. They have both modular and extensible features. In, uh, the modular currently is a very hot word because it's become a company. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, we, we think the MLIR and the RISC-5 can form a very huge ecosystem for the code design. Uh, and the unified uh, ecosystem can really unlock more code design opportunities, right? So. Maybe people here are more uh, familiar with the MLR, but maybe you, you, you don't know much about the RISC V. So, here is a very quick introduction uh, for the RISC V ecosystem. And RISC V is an open source ISA, and it has instructions and the extension, uh, it has based instructions and the extension part. Uh, and except for the standard extension uh, in this uh, list, you can make your own custom extension. Um, maybe you, you have your own accelerator or something like this. You can just use a uh, RISC V system to build your uh, instructions. And so uh, this is where the modular and the extensible happens. 
And uh, this feature is just like MLR, right? They, both of them are modular and extensible. So that's why I, I, I said it, it, it is a very uh, perfect match for these two to perform the huge uh, hot so software and co uh, hardware co-design. And in our uh, compiler framework, we most focus on some uh, high performance uh, hardwares uh, like uh, CMD proce processor and vector processor, uh, GP, GPU, and DSA. And currently, we have implemented the uh, vector processors for the RISC V vector extensions. Uh, and uh, we also try to uh, support the DSA. Uh, we actually use the Gemini. Uh, it is an uh, uh, accelerator from the RISC V ecosystem. And this is the hardware set. And what about the, uh, hard, uh, uh, what about the software set? We actually always use uh, some uh, framework like PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow, OpenSQL, something like this, to get the uh, module IR from, from some uh, deep learning module representations. Maybe we can use the MLR TOSA or Linux dialect uh, to uh, conduct uh, these rep rep representations. And almost uh, most of them are just focusing on the deep learning workloads, right? And we also want to uh, uh, support some multimodal representations, something like uh, image processing, uh, audio processing, and some pre-processing uh, things uh, before we, we conduct some deep learning inference like this. So we uh, use our own domain-specific dialects uh, to finish this. And what about the gap between the very high-level representations to the low-level hardware? Uh, of course, we, we use MLR. And uh, MLR uh, gave us a very strong core dialects, uh, the memory of dialects, uh, fine dialects, and SCF dialects, something like this. And uh, what, what should we do to su support uh, the RISC-V su uh, specific hardware? And we have found some limitations in MLR. Uh, for example, for the vector representations, maybe they cannot uh, accept a, a dynamic VL. Uh, so maybe we should uh, add this support in the vector dialect. And uh, sometimes we, we, we actually need the RVV specific dialect uh, to support some uh, ops. Uh, and we also uh, want to reuse something like uh, LVM VP intrinsic to make it. Uh, uh, be a generic uh, approach. And uh, this is for the standard uh, extension, right? And the, what about the uh, specific uh, accelerator? And we use a specific dialect. Uh, for example, for the uh, Gemini dialect, uh, we uh, add some Gemini operations and uh, we wrap the uh, instructions into the intrinsic uh, to make the whole software stack. Uh, in, in, uh, from the MLR level to the hardware uh, code level, we use uh, LVM and some, sometimes we use the RISC V GNU toolchain and their own emulators to run it and to evaluate it. Uh, sometimes we will uh, get the cycles from the emulators uh, to, to see what will uh, happen. And uh, so currently, uh, we can also uh, talk about how the co-design happens. I think there are uh, two points of the co-design. The first one is we can conduct the pre-processing and uh, deep learning workload co-design. That is, means uh, maybe we can uh, improve the performance of the pre-processing uh, themselves, uh, and uh, we can unify the data structure uh, between the pre-processing and deep learning workload, and maybe we can avoid some copy overhead. Um, and we can also have some potential uh, fusion opportunity. Maybe we can, if we mm, you, you, you unify the pre-processing and the uh, deep learning workload. And these are, are the co-design from, from the first approach. And the second one is, we can maybe do some compiler paths and hardware architecture, uh, architecture co-design. Uh, it means maybe we can uh, design the representations for the hardware features, like uh, we, we, 
we add some information or add some operand uh, for RVV or for Gemini, something like this. And we can configure the path by the hardware information. You know, for different hardware implementations, they use different maybe vector lines. Maybe the registers are very different. So for all this kind of uh, different design, we can configure our uh, compiler path uh, to best fit for uh, the hardware design. Uh, and uh, we, we can also think about there are also potential auto-tuning or DSE opportunities if we consider both the compiler passes and the hardware architecture. Maybe we can, we, we, we can form a very huge uh, search space and uh, maybe we can give uh, more uh, or higher performance. And, and that is what I said we can do the co-design between the MR and RISC V. Uh, and next, we, I will give some uh, examples. And I think uh, the, the key to the co-design is uh, the unified abstractions and representations. And uh, I think the MR can unify the domain-specific software stack. Uh, what that mean? Let's see uh, the, the, the demos. And uh, uh, for the much model, things we, we consider the, the image processing and the audio processing. Uh, and uh, these are the operations uh, in our uh, body compiler. And they can uh, conduct the co uh, correlations and rotations. And uh, you, you can see the, in the middle of the image, it is a resize. Resize is uh, always used for uh, b b b before the uh, work workload of the uh, deep learning because some something uh, fixed size is needed for some models, right? So uh, we evaluate the resize in, in our slides. You can see the, the yellow one is uh, our body compiler implementations, and the uh, dark blue one is the performance from OpenCV, and OpenCV is uh, the state of the art architect, uh, the state of art uh, work for the image processing, and we can uh, perform better than them. And this is because we uh, use uh, we actually use the same algorithm to uh, finish the resize uh, operations, but we can re reuse a lot of compiler uh, optimizations. Maybe we can use some CSE. Maybe we can use. Uh, auto uh, vectorization, something like this. And this is why we, 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 we should actually uh, build things like this. And we, we also have audio processing things. And how can we build the whole stack? And first of all, we should have a domain specific dialect. Uh, for example, we have digital image processing dialect and uh, digital audio processing dialect. And uh, then uh, for the first use, we can directly use them in the MLR ecosystem, right? We can uh, use it in a function of MLR, and we can directly use the operations itself. Uh, that is OK. And uh, in another side, we can wrap the uh, operations into a MLR function, right? So in this case, we can uh, further wrap them as a C++ library. And in this case, uh, you can see that we use the same dialect to uh, finish uh, two scenarios when we program uh, the domain-specific uh, uh, applications. Uh, the first one is we use MLR. The second one is we actually use the C++. And this is the uh, uh, reuse, where the reuse happens. And uh, after we unified something like this kind of IR, and we think the optimization should not be fragmented. And uh, we actually don't want to port an algorithm to every platform, right? You, 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 you may not want to uh, write the intrinsic for the ARM, use the intrinsic for the RISC V, for the Intel something like this. We, we should use a unified optimization. And uh, we think uh, MR gave us an opportunity for the high level uh, optimization algorithms. We can get very high-level ab abstractions like uh, Metamo and convolutions. And we can use some existing uh, algorithm uh, for, uh, for uh, optimization. And we can reuse the compilation optimization. Uh, and we, we will use uh, MLIR 
uh, vector dialect to achieve portable optimizations. Uh, this is uh, very clear. Uh, and we can detect the target hardware and configure uh, the optimization path. It, it means we should uh, know what the target hardware is and we, we configure uh, the compiler path. And uh, we can see that this is a convolution uh, evaluation. And uh, the same uh, optimization we implement once, they can perform uh, better, uh, they, they can perform uh, similar uh, on the ARM SVE, on the Intel AVX2, uh, AVX512, and we, we just write once, they can perform very well. And you, you may ask, what about the uh, RIS-5? Because my topic is, is uh, RIS-5 and uh, MLIR. So, uh, the reason why I, I didn't list the RISC-V uh, here is uh, we actually don't have the RISC-V factor uh, actual hardware now, so we, we, we only use uh, the emulators for the cycles, so uh, it's not comparable here. And another way is uh, MLR has some limitations for the RISC-V uh, vector extensions. So uh, the next uh, part I want to share is that if uh, we do need to expose some hardware features to the compiler. Let's add the new IR abstractions. Uh, what that means, uh, this is the RISC-5 vector extension vectorization uh, for a very, very simple scenario for the vector add. And they actually have two approaches. The first one is mask-based, the second one is stream mining based uh, The first one is very easy to implement. Uh, use the mask uh, operations uh, or regions to achieve and but uh, for the stream mining approach, we, we, we need to set the dynamic VL, the vector lens, and we need the uh, vector op uh, operations to accept the VL operand, right? So uh, this uh, is the information we need at the compile time. We, we, we need the con uh, dynamic VL configurations. Uh, we need the uh, operations uh, to accept the dynamic vector lens operand. But uh, MR cannot do that currently, because uh, uh, maybe from the very beginning, MLR is designed for uh, the fixed uh, size. So uh, this is the limitation. And what we do is to add uh, the support for the specific uh, informations. Uh, we, we actually uh, balance uh, the, the generic features and the specific features. Firstly, we add the RBV specific things uh, to set VL. Uh, the set the dynamic vector lens, and another one is we use the gene generic vector prediction operations uh, to make our approach is uh, a generic approach. Uh, and except for the RBV set, we also mentioned that we are supporting uh, the Gemini is the accelerator from the RISC-V ecosystem. And here is the hardware uh, architectures, and but I'm more focused on the uh, software side. The software uh, side is uh, they, they don't have a compiler for the Gemini. Uh, they use the inline assembly and they use the macro functions and they wrap them around to provide some C++ uh, op operators. And uh, in this case, uh, they, they cannot reuse some frameworks like uh, uh, they, they, they always use uh, their own operators to achieve uh, the model, uh, they re-implement re, uh, re the model again, again, then the model is different. And how about uh, make them uh, integrate into the MLR ecosystem? So we, we, we add the uh, Gemini support in our body compiler, and it, uh, basically I, I, we add the LVM intrinsic and wrap the LVM intrinsic into the MLR side, and we uh, pr provide some high-level MLR operations for the uh, Gemini. So here is some lowering path. Maybe we have some deep learning models and we, we lower to the Linux or the Tosa and we actually implement the lowering from the Linux to the Gemini dialect uh, and then we lower the Gemini dialect to the intrinsic dialect. Uh, and we found maybe this is not the most elegant way to achieve. Maybe we can also mm, conduct this uh, from the deep learning model directly use the G Gemini dialect and to conduct the lowering. 
and maybe we can uh, reuse the Linux dialect, and we, we, we use lower level intrinsic operations uh, for the lowering. And uh, we currently don't have a specific result because we are conducting the experiments and uh, maybe we can uh, compare them and to give the, uh, the final answer which one is uh, better. Uh, and uh, these are the most of my presentation and what is the net for our whole uh, body compiler. Uh, I think uh, the, currently the whole uh, framework is, uh, is built and uh, the next step is to explore how to achieve co-design for the whole pipeline. We, we actually uh, build uh, each point of the whole framework. So the next is how to make them integrate together and work together to make the whole pipeline co-design. Uh, actually, the body compiler is a domain-specific uh, framework, right? So we are targeting the deep learning domain currently. And uh, we are trying to build the co-design ecosystem based on the MLR and the RISC-V. Uh, we hope to achieve deep uh, co-design uh, from uh, DSL to DSA. And we do believe that deep uh, co-design for the uh, deep learning is a bright future. And if you're interested in our uh, work, you can just go to our uh, homepage and GitHub. And if you're uh, interested in the details of the RBB and our online service, I, I will give the talk tomorrow. And that's all my presentation. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, Hongbin, for the great talk. Any questions from the audience? Uh, hello. Thank you so much for your impressive work. Thank you. I was just wondering, so you mentioned the Gemini accelerator, yeah, uh, which has a scratch pad memory. Uh, and then there were some dialing uh, operations there, right? I was just wondering, do you guys have an automatic way to perform this dialing right now? Because indeed, there's also some dialing efforts in the Linux dialect. So I was wondering like, how this currently works, basically. Yes, I, I, actually, from the Linux dialect to uh, Gemini dialect, we have uh, a gap between the maybe the memory of layout or something like this. We, we, we always use. Uh, something like uh, some mo uh, a sub view or uh, some copy, some log. Uh, that's the reason why we think this is not the most elegant way uh, to achieve this lowering pipeline uh, because they already have a lot of overhead. So that's why I said that uh, maybe this one is better, maybe this one is better. But currently, we, we, we don't have this result to share because we are, uh, this is work in progress. <laughs> Okay, perfect. I will, I will talk to you. We will discuss this afterwards. Perfect. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so thanks a lot for the talk. Uh, I was wondering, uh, do you have any plans for upstreaming the RVV dialect? Uh, sorry? Do you have any plans for upstreaming the RVV dialect into the, you know, LIR uh, upstream repo? Uh, you, you mean for the uh, uh, upstream? Yeah. Uh, we, we conducting the uh, vector lens, dynamic vector lens of the RVV things uh, with the upstream actually. Uh, I have already discussed this uh, with the ARM people and the Google ERA people. Uh, we are working on a generic approach for the vector uh, things. Uh, b b you know, the ARMs, SV and uh, RVV is quite different. Uh, although they, they, they are also something like CMD or vector, but, but the, the hardware set is different and the application is different. So it's challenging to modify uh, the current uh, vector dialect to feed for both of them. Uh, it's challenging, but we are discussing this and uh, we are writing something like the RFC um, to, to communicate with, uh, with people. Uh, to see which one is better. Yeah, you can, I'm uh, looking forward to this. Okay, that's excellent, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, Hongbin. And uh, this is the end of this talk, and uh, then we will begin our next talk in five minutes. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs>